guys today we're going to be doing another comparison video in this particular comparison video we're going to be pitting a box saw versus a folding saw of pretty comparable size since you guys seem to really like my last comparison video I decided to do this one and I think I'm gonna be trying to do more before we get into the actual use part of this video please do not forget to comment like share and subscribe if you guys want to see more awesome content like this video and just awesome Alaskan content in general. So now let's roll into the use video and commentary. I was saying I'm bringing this comparison or I'm doing this comparison video because you guys seem to really like my last comparison video the saw versus axe versus big knife just overall comparison video just to see and test times cleanliness of cut just in general to see how these three different systems perform but I also thought since I have a buck saw and I have a folding saw here I thought I would show you guys just a direct comparison now do keep in mind I realize that Baco makes folding saws, Silky makes folding saws, Corona makes folding saws. There are multiple different folding saw companies out there just as there are multiple different bucking saw companies out there. So I realize that just like with the other comparison, this may not be the most complete and comprehensive comparison between these two different types of systems but it's a general overlook at the two different systems and I brought this little puck with me to show you guys or just to kind of talk about it I sh I'll roll in the footage of me showing you this too this is the two different cuts from the two different saws as well as I'm rolling in the uh, speed at which and I'm not going to speed up the speed of the cuts that's going to be exactly how or that's the exact time with the cuts I think I'm going to try and do a side by side I might just roll it over my current talking footage I'm not sure quite how I want to do this but I just want to show you guys pretty much side by side a comparison between these three different systems or sorry these two different systems and so the first one of course is opening of course the folding saw wins in opening every time without a question folding saws are significantly faster and that's the primary reason why I drift toward folding saws as opposed to bucking saws nowadays but bucking saws still have some nice features to them this one is larger it does work probably just a little bit faster but no doubt this folding saw definitely can keep up with it especially for the size and weight being considered it's a very impressive saw so once again this isn't necessarily to tell you guys that you need to go get a folding saw or you need to go get a bucking saw this is more for the people who are just curious about seeing two different systems compared directly against each other so the only other thing i want to comment on because pretty much the test footage is pretty much commentary in and of itself is the cleanliness of the cut now i do realize that once again this goes back to teeth but you guys can see the teeth <clears throat> on both of these I believe is for dry wood I'm pretty sure I know on this one it's for dry wood this can cut green wood but it's primarily for dry wood and uh, it's I think a medium kind of grit if you will or medium like tooth uh, uh, it's a medium tooth saw so it cuts you know a little rough but it definitely does cut and this one you guys could see was a little bit finer. I think this is also a medium tooth. This is this should not be a fine tooth. This should be a medium tooth. So I believe these are both medium tooth for dry dead wood, just like what I cut there. And I saw a really large contrast actually in this little puck here where this is the folding saw and you guys probably won't be able to see it but I'll, like I said I'll roll in the footage but the folding saw side is actually very smooth there are some of course because this is dead wood there are some rougher coarser areas but for the most part by and large this little puck is very smooth to the touch on this side whereas if I turn it over to the other side the side that the buck saw cut it's actually very very coarse and there's quite a bit of teeth chatter marks in left in this and some might be able to say that that was more of a user error I don't really think so I wasn't really noticing anything except toward the end um, with the cutting where it would have really left chatter marks but I'm seeing quite a few chatter marks and once again a lot of very rough grain on this side the side of the buck saw cut Another thing I'll note with the buck saw, and this is something that you can alleviate a lot of times when I would solely run my buck saw before I got the folding saw. Something that you had to take into account, which I kind of wanted to show by sawing particularly on the ground, 
is the kind of crampness of this handle in ergonomics. And this is just the general shape of a buck saw. So when you hold a buck saw, you're generally holding it like this. So when you get really close to the ground and your hand's actually up more like this, sorry, it's kind of hard to show here because I have to hold this thing above my waist. But when the saw is below your waist and you have to kind of hold it like this, like I was kind of noticing when I was cutting on the ground, uh, you could tell that the saw's ergonomics became really cramped. Now, if you're cutting, once again, above your waist and just in line with your arm like this, it's very easy to cut with a buck saw, but due to the ergonomics and how you're holding it at a 90 degree angle, uh, that can lead to a lot of cramping when you get lower below your waist. Uh, and so something that I noticed and really like about the Baca, or not Baca, <laughs> but the Silky Big Boy and most Silkies and even most other folding saws is most of them have two positions. If you guys notice here, there's two different notches. And so this is for when you're holding and cutting around your waist level. And then when you actually get lower, you have this notch that you can put the saw blade into so that it brings the saw blade actually up or sorry, not the saw blade, but it actually brings the handle up above the saw blade so that you can more easily cut things below you. And that is really nice because a lot of people, if you just have to cut one thing below your waist, you may think, oh, just suck it up. But if you have to cut a lot on the ground or below your waist, it actually is really nice to have that feature because when you are cutting and you're not in an ergonomic position like this, what happens is it fatigues your muscles more rapidly and so that can uh, really limit your capability and capacity to continue this saw. So anyways, those were just a few noticed things that, or those were the few things I noticed with the two saws in direct comparison, just as a personal note that you guys may have not noted yourselves. Um, but aside from that, they are pretty comparable. I still do like folding saws a little bit more. Of course, a folding saw, as you can see here, is significantly smaller um, in just overall size, even extended size. I mean, it's gonna be longer if you just take it like this. It's gonna be significantly, or not significantly, but it's gonna be a few inches on both sides longer when they're both open. But for the most part, that length really does not perturb me. And the biggest thing I like about the folding saw is one, its size and weight when it's collapsed and to the ease and ready access you have to this thing. You can just immediately pull it out, get it into battery without much thought, without having to hold the whole thing together because with a tensioned saw like a buck saw like this, the moment you take the tension, I'm gonna take the tension off this one now, but the moment you take the tension off of a buck saw, it all kind of just falls to pieces. And I'll show you guys what I mean here. And so this thing is pretty contingent on having it at tension. So you guys can see here, the moment that this is taken out, you can see that the whole thing just pretty much falls apart. And that's pretty much how the buck saw design works. But at the same time, that's also something that you have to account for. And it's very hard to put a buck saw away by yourself, especially if you don't have some type of table or some type of thing that you can rest your buck saw on. that's basically all I have to say on these two saws hopefully you guys enjoyed this video like this whole use test and let me know if you guys want to see any more types of these comparisons between different tools to see how they stack up against each other in a head-to-head -head test anyways guys that's all for now and I'm